to just uh, continue with the review of quantum mechanics, introduce uh, the Schrodinger and the Heisenberg pictures before we start to quantize the electromagnetic fields. So, yesterday when we finished, we were looking at uh, some problems. So, for, for example, suppose I take uh, a harmonic oscillator in one of the eigenstates of the energy. N ket. So the energy of this state is n plus half h cross omega. Can you calculate the expectation value of x in this state? We had done this yesterday, isn't it? Okay, so this is the this is zero. Expectation value of x is square. So I have to calculate n x, x, n. So I substitute x cap in terms of a and a dagger. Would this be 0? This will not be 0. So let me give you the value. x square expectation value is h cross by m omega into n plus half. Expectation value of x is 0. Expectation value of x square is so much. Similarly, expectation value of p is 0 and expectation value of p square is uh, m h cross omega into n plus half. So as I mentioned yesterday, the, the energy eigenstates have well-defined energy. And uh, say that uh, the phase of the oscillator is completely undetermined. And that is why when you take an expectation value from an ensemble of systems, you will get a value of 0. And recall that we define the uncertainty in the uh, x as x square average minus x average square. This will half. So because x, x average square is x average is 0, this is simply h cross by m omega into n plus half raised per half. The uncertainty in the position of the oscillator in, it, in the nth eigenstate is uh, square root of h cross by m omega n plus half raised per half. Similarly, I can calculate delta p, the uncertainty in the momentum, p square minus p square. That's square root of this quantity because expectation value p is zero. So I define the product of uncertainties delta x times delta p. I can calculate from here, and what I find is delta x times delta p is equal to h cross into n plus half. So I substitute the values of delta x and delta p, and I find that the uncertainty product in position and momentum of the linear harmonic oscillator is h cross n plus half. And uh, so the lowest uncertainty product appears for n is equal to 0 state. And uh, for this state, delta x, delta p is equal to h cross by 2. All higher order, higher uh, excited states have a larger value of uncertainty product. Okay, now I need to understand what is the time evolution of the system in one of the energy eigenstates, for example. So suppose I take a state which happens to be in an energy eigenstate. So let me take a state, for example, H E is equal to E E. So for any system, suppose I take ket E is the energy eigenstate, so H E is equal to E times E. E is the energy, eigen, energy eigenvalue. Remember, the Schrodinger equation is I h cross del by del, del t of E of the state is equal to h times E. If I want to understand how the system generated in a, an eigenket E evolves with time, this eigenket must satisfy this equation. For any state, any state psi will satisfy this equation 
But if the state is an energy eigenstate, H times E is simply E times E. And I can then integrate this equation and I get E as a function of time, uh, as a function of time is equal to E at zero into exponential minus I E T by H cross. So energy eigenstates evolve with time according to this equation. There's only a phase change. The phase of the oscillator changes with time and the time dependence is exponential minus I E T by H cross. Yeah. Uh, e is not an eigenstate. Yes. In a general state of the system, that is superposition of different eigenstates. Yeah. So can we put this equation into different parts corresponding to each eigenstate? No, not this equation. Mm -hmm. This e the, the equation still is still this. So I'll have I H cross del by del T of psi is equal to H psi. What I can do is psi at T is equal to zero, I can write as sigma C N E N where ENs are the eigenkets. So then I can substitute here and then integrate. But because I know that each eigenstate, energy eigenstate evolves with time as exponential minus IE and TA by H cross, so I can write this as is equal to sigma CN exponential minus IE and T by H cross into EN. So it is like essentially taking uh, every, uh, taking this equation, the first equation you have written, yeah. and saying that each eigenstate uh, is an independent variable in this and split. And yeah, they're all independent. They are, each eigenstate is an, orth I mean, it's an independent, eigen I in eigenstates are all orthonormal to each other. So essentially, they do not mix among themselves. Each one evolves independently and with the time dependence exponential minus IE and T by H cross. Okay. Now, before I look at uh, the time evolution of superposition states under two different pictures, let me introduce the two pictures. One is the Schrodinger picture and one is the Heisenberg picture. As I mentioned to you yesterday, in the Schrodinger picture, the eigen, the kets evolve with time and the operators are independent of time. In the Heisenberg picture, the kets are fixed in time and the operators evolve with time. So let me look at, let me start with an example. So I have the Schrodinger equation. So this equation, uh, sorry, I H cross del by del T of psi is equal to H psi. This is the Schrodinger equation and this is an equation of how the ket evolves with time. And so this is a Schrodinger picture. In this picture, the operators, like position operator, momentum operator, they're all independent of time. This is the Hamiltonian operator. So if I'm in conservative systems, where the total energy is conserved, H is also independent of time. So we will only look at systems where the Hamiltonian is independent of time. So this H is also independent of time. But psi evolves with time. Now, as I said, what is important is that the expectation value of any operator must be the same whether I look at in the Heisenberg picture or in the Schrodinger picture. Now, if this, if H is independent of time, I can write a formal solution of this equation like this. Psi as a function of time is equal to exponential minus I H T by H cross into psi at t is equal to zero. Exponential of an operator. Exponential of an operator is exactly defined like, uh, so if I have an exponential of an operator, this is one plus a plus one by two factorial a a plus one by three factorial a a a etc. With single operator, there's no problem because A and A commute. But if I had, for example, exponential A into exponential B, I have to be a little careful. I'll give you a formula for that, but uh, so that is where I define this exponential of this operator. You can verify that this is a 
solution to this by differentiating both sides and substituting into this equation. If you differentiate both sides, for example, if I calculate I h cross del psi by del t, so I h cross del psi by del t, this will be equal to I h cross del by del t of exponential minus I h t by h cross psi at t is equal to 0. And if I had written this exponential operator as a series, I'm going to differentiate, I will get essentially minus i by h cross h exponential minus i h t by h cross psi at t is equal to 0. You expand this exponential in terms of a series, differentiate, and you will find that that's differentiated one which essentially gives you the same as if you are differentiating just like a normal quantity. So this is equal to i into minus i is 1, h cross cancels off and I get h into this remaining is nothing but psi of t. So this solution which I wrote, this formal solution, is a solution of the Schrodinger equation and this is the way this equation represents the way the state evolves with time. Exponential minus i h t by h cross so that's the Schrodinger picture. Now for example in this picture if I were to calculate the expectation value of an operator a as a function of time, I will have this A A is independent of time, but this expectation value can change with time because ket psi changes with time. Now I want to go another, to another picture where I want to take away the time dependence from the ket into the operator. So let me define uh, the ket corresponding to the Heisenberg picture, I just put a subscript h here, as psi at t is equal to 0. So that doesn't change with time anymore. And this equation I can invert this formally and write this as exponential i h t by h cross into psi of t. I've just taken this, uh, I multiplied by an operator exponential i h t by h cross on, the, on both sides and then because the operator h is the same, this becomes equal to 1 identity and I get uh, this equation just gets reversed into psi of h, it's psi of t is equal to 0 is equal to this thing. And by definition, this is independent of time any now. This, this product is independent of time. This operator operating on this will always be at of psi at t is equal to 0. Okay, now the expectation value of an operator is remember psi s t psi, uh, so no subscript means uh, Schrodinger, uh, Schrodinger picture into a into psi of t. So now I have this equation for psi of t which I use in this equation. So what is uh, what is bra psi of t? This is ket psi of t. Exponential plus i h t by h cross. Please remember h is a Hermitian operator. So this is will be called equal to psi at t is equal to 0 exponential i h t by h cross a exponential i h t by h cross psi at t is equal to 0. I have just substituted expression for the evolution of the ket with time into this equation. I have just substituted for psi of t from this equation. Essentially, I am taking it back here 
and replacing in terms of psi at t is equal to 0. Minus here. No? There's a minus here. So this, this is psi of t is equal to 0 as a function of psi of t. So I'm replacing psi of t as a function of psi of t is equal to 0. Right? So there's a minus sign here, there's a plus sign here. So I define this as the operator in the Heisenberg picture. And this is nothing but psi of h. So the operator in the Heisenberg picture is equal to exponential i h t by h cross operator in the Schrodinger picture minus i h t by h cross. This is independent of time, but this is a function of time. And please note that h may not commute with a, so I can't interchange a and exponential i h t by h cross. If a commutes with h exponential uh, h, then, for example, what is what will be the Hamiltonian in the Heisenberg picture? This will be h, and h commutes with exponential i h t by h cross. So this will simply be h. So this is independent of time. In the Heisenberg picture, the Hamiltonian in the Heisenberg picture and the Hamiltonian in the Schrodinger picture are the same. Because if I replace a by h, and if I expand the exponential, this h commutes with all the h's anyway. So I can actually interchange this h and exponential, and I get uh, unity, so th that means the Hamiltonian is the same whether you are looking at the Schrodinger picture or the Heisenberg picture. Uh, uh, why, uh, is it, why, is, does it com com why does the Hamiltonian commute with the exponential terms? Because this is also h only. This is an h operator, there is an h operator here. h operator always commutes with h operator. So, I can, if, if you expand this exponential, you will have h. And that h and all these h will commute anyway. So I can take this h out and re reform back an exponential. And then I will, uh, actually then that means I can interchange these two. Because this and all this function coin, uh, commute with each other, okay? Now, I need to calculate what is the time evolution. I, need, I can calculate an equation describing the time evolution of this operator in the Heisenberg picture. So for this, I differentiate this equation. So I differentiate this with respect to time. And let me, so let me calculate. So d a h by d t Let me assume uh, in our uh, analysis here that a has no time dependence in the Schrodinger picture. You see, there could also be operators which are dependent on time in the Schrodinger picture itself. This is called an explicit dependence on time. But we will not look at that. Let me assume in the Schrodinger picture, this operator I, is independent of time. For example, position operator, momentum operator, they will all be independent of time. So when I differentiate this, I don't have to differentiate A with respect to time. Okay? So when I differentiate this equation, what do I get? So I first differentiate the first exponential. So I get I H by H cross into exponential I H T by H cross A exponential minus I H T by H cross plus exponential i h t by h cross a h. Okay, so you see when I differentiate the second exponential, I will have a i h minus i h by h cross. And because that commutes with this, I can write the exponential first and then the, the factor which comes out of differentiation afterwards. So I just write the differential of this comes here, the differential of this comes here, and what is this? This is nothing but a h of t. This is also a h of t. So this is nothing but i by h cross h a sorry a h minus a h. So if I take the i h cross on the other side. I get i h cross 
dAh by dt is equal to commutator AH H. This is called the Heisenberg equation of motion. So there is no Schrodinger, there is no is cross del psi by del t is equal to x psi in the Heisenberg picture because psi is independent of time. I would have to solve this equation to get how the operators vary with time. From the operator variation with time, I can always calculate the expectation value because psi does not change with time at all. So in the Schrodinger picture, I calculate how psi varies with time to calculate the expectation value. In the Heisenberg picture, I calculate how the operators vary with time to calculate expectation values and other quantities. And actually this particular picture is closer to classical mechanics. For example, let's look at, uh, let's go back to short the harmonic oscillator and let me calculate I H cross D X by D T. X is an operator. In the Schrodinger picture, X operator is a constant. At least not, X operator is a constant, P operator is a constant. In the Heisenberg picture, X operator becomes a function of time, okay? So uh, let me put XH here. So this is equal to XH comma H. So let me substitute from uh, the values of X. So X was, so this is, if you go back, we had written this, H cross by two M omega, A dagger, plus a comma h operator is h cross omega a dagger a plus half. This is the x operator. Okay, all these operators are supposed to be functions of time now. A dagger is a function of time, A is a function of time, everything seems to be a function of time. But let me substitute the X operator and the uh, H operator here. So if I expand this, I will get this H cross by 2M omega comes out. H cross omega comes out. What will happen to this factor half? That will not contribute because a, a dagger plus a commutator with a dagger a and a dagger plus a commutator with half. I can open the commutator into two commutators, a dagger plus a commutator with a dagger a and a dagger a commutator with half. And because half is a number, a dagger a commutator with half just disappears. So I will get a dagger plus a commutator with a dagger a. And I will leave it to you to show you can use the commutation relations between A dagger and A. And what you will get is essentially, uh, sorry, uh, uh, into I cross. Okay, let me, let me give you one. This what act, what you get is actually h cross omega under root h cross by two m omega into a minus a dagger. This is what you get, and this finally leads to the fact that x h by d t is equal to p h This is the same as a classical equation of motion dx by dt is equal to p by m. Now it is an operator form because it is in, these are all now operators. Similarly, I leave it for you to calculate dp h by dt. And you will get that as minus omega square into x cap. So the two equations, the, 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 uh, uh, the operator equations essentially are very closely related to the classical picture. 
the Heisenberg picture is very closely related to the, the classical picture. Sir, uh, that P that you have written. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just, uh, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, I would, have, I would have to do a little more careful uh, analysis, I think. Uh, uh, okay, we will repeat it. I think I, I have to do a little careful analysis by expressing XH uh, in terms of the... Uh, in terms of the Hamiltonian, uh, in terms of the vary uh, going from the Schrodinger to the Heisenberg picture, and then calculate. But I think I'll repeat it again. But but this equation is what you will finally get as the Heisenberg equation of motion of the uh, x operator and the p operators. So I I think uh, I'll have to be a little careful in this analysis here. So I'll I'll. I'll uh, I mean, I, I'll, I'll leave it as a problem. Why don't you people try it out also? And we will uh, resolve it in the next class. OK. OK, so now uh, let me calculate, for example, uh, the uh, evolution of this operator A. So uh, one second, let me just, I h cross d a by d t. Okay, so this is, uh, A H cross omega A dagger A plus half Let me try to see. The A H operator will be exponential minus uh, I No, no, no. You see, uh, I think I have to go back to the fact that uh, the H operator in the Heisenberg picture is the same as the H operator in the Schrodinger picture. So this implies that A dagger H, A H is equal to A dagger A because H H I will write as H cross omega A dagger H A H plus half and similarly for H operator. But for A, I mean this equation is written I H cross del A by del T. Yes. So that should be the, in the Heisenberg picture. No? That's this equation of this one? In the upper equation. Here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm just I'm just I, I'm just coming back to that. I'm just trying to figure it out. Wait. So A H is uh, exponential I H T by H cross A. H is the same. Well, I have to work out the. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, actually, we have to work out the commutation relations in the Heisenberg picture. 
okay the commutation relations are the same so let me let me go back so for example we have commutation relations between uh, say uh, x and p is equal to i h cross right this is the Schrodinger picture now let me go to the x heisenberg picture so x heisenberg is actually exponential i h t by h cross x exponential minus i h t by h cross and similarly p h is equal to exponential i h t by h cross p exponential minus i h t by h cross so x h p h is equal to the commutator of these two okay so this into this so this will be x h p h minus p h x h let me put this bracket Okay, so if I substitute this, so I get xh into ph will be exponential i h t by h cross x into p because these two operators will cancel each other and I will get exponential minus i h t by h cross minus exponential i h t by h cross into p x into exponential minus i h t by h cross which is equal to exponential i h t by h cross commutator of x and p exponential minus i h t by h cross is equal to because x p is i h cross that's a number and I get the, the, the operators xh and ph satisfy the same commutation relations as x and p. So the commutation relations have not changed. So actually, in this equation, the commutation relation between xh and h is the same as the commutation relation between x and h. Okay, because the commutation relations in the Heisenberg picture and the commutation relations in the corresponding Schrodinger picture are the same. So, this, that is why this analysis is still alright, because I have used the fact that the commutation, I am using the commutation relations of the Schrodinger picture to analyze the problem here. So, I will, I, what I will do is, I leave it as a problem to you to write the xh in the Heisenberg picture and analyze this problem and finally you will get d x h by d t is equal to p h by m. Sir, yeah. Would it be okay to consider the commutator as an operator and then multiply the exponentials on both these sides? Which one? Uh, so the commutator, any commutator. <laughs> okay. I consider this as an operation. That's an operator, yeah. Uh, and then multiply the exponentials on both these sides and then evaluate. Yeah. Even if it's an, uh, so what you're saying is if I, if I have an operator, if I have a commutator relation a, b, this is uh, a b minus b a okay so i will if i uh, yeah but this will ha this will be uh, this this commutator will remain the same only if, if it's a constant if it's a constant what if it's operator mm. so if it's operator i can still multiply the exponentials on both sides and it will give me the operator in the yeah so let me say it. so this is suppose let me assume c okay so I will have exponential i, uh, let, let me call this u, u operator as ex exponential i h t by h cross. Okay, so remember u dagger is u inverse is equal to exponential minus i h t by h cross. u dagger will have h dagger and h dagger is h and i changes to minus one and this is the same as the universe operator. So I have u a b u inverse minus u 
B A U inverse is equal to U C U inverse. Yeah. Yeah. So this is U A U inverse U B U inverse minus U B U inverse U A U inverse is equal to U C U inverse. These are all these are operators. So this is A H B H minus B H A H is equal to C H. So this is A in the Hamilton in the uh, in the Heisenberg picture. Set it with the same commutative relation. Okay. Yeah. In our case, BH is already is Hamiltonian, which is already equal to H in the I'm sorry. So in our case, BH is H. So it's yeah, yeah, that is one 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 particular pair. But I could have a general pair of operators. Any general pair of operators, A and A dagger, for example. So A and A dagger will satisfy the same commutation relation of one even in the Heisenberg picture. If there is an operator on the other side, that must be also expressed in the Heisenberg picture. That's all. Okay. Okay. So let me take uh, as an example. Let me take uh, uh, let me take a, 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 a harmonic oscillator state, which is say, say half of zero plus half of one. This is at t is equal to zero. So what would be psi at t? Half exponential minus i uh, x cross omega two x cross omega by x cross by two by <laughs> half omega omega by two t omega t by two plus half one. Exponential minus i. This is energy half h cross omega. This is energy three by two h cross omega. One by root two. Yeah. So can you calculate the expectation value of x as a function of time? What will be x uh, expectation value as a function of time? So this will be essentially psi of t. Now I'm in the Schrodinger picture. When I'm writing like this, it is the Schrodinger picture because I am actually evolving the state as a function of time. So the state of the system was this combination at t is equal to zero. It has evolved another combination a little later time. So this is the Schrodinger picture in which the operators are constants. So why don't I leave this to you? You can substitute this, use the uh, relationships with uh, destruction and, and, uh, and uh, creation operators, and what you will get is essentially h cross by 2m omega. Cross omega. Yeah, Sachin. Problem. Okay. So this is the superposition state of two eigen energy eigen states, and here the expectation value varies with time. Now, what I would like you to do is to please use the Heisenberg picture. In the Heisenberg picture, x is now a function of time. So the Heisenberg picture, x will be given by psi of 0, x is a function of time, psi is 0. And you should get the same expression. I can shift the time dependence from the kets to the operators. So that's a simple exercise. 
Please use. So let me put the edge here. Use the Heisenberg picture and show that this expectation value is consistent with this expectation value. So for this, you would need how x changes with time, which you have calculated, it will be in terms of a and a dagger. Please note, a and a dagger are also functions of time now, because x itself is a function of time. So a and a dagger are functions of time. And then you can calculate the expectation value of x, and similarly expectation value of p, etc. So why I did this is uh, because when we quantize electromagnetic fields, the Heisenberg picture is much easier to analyze the problem than the Schrodinger picture. In many problems in, uh, uh, in uh, field theory, Heisenberg picture is much more convenient to use than the Schrodinger picture. So when I quantize electromagnetic fields, I will have to represent the electric field, magnetic field by operators. So in the Schrodinger picture, these would be constants independent of time and the state will evolve as a function of time. But when I go to the Heisenberg picture, the operators, electric field operator, magnetic field operators will be functions of time and the state will be fixed. And it will be much easier for us to analyze using the Heisenberg picture than the Schrodinger picture. So this is a small introduction with harmonic oscillator that I wanted to give before uh, we use this a little more extensively when we go through the quantization of electromagnetic fields. Okay, very simple question. A linear harmonic oscillator is in some state such that if I measure its energy, the probability of finding phi by two half, phi by two h cross omega is 0.2, and the probability of finding 11 by two h cross omega is 0.8. So you have to write two possible cats describing this oscillator. 